In today's lesson, we're going to talk about layers and the function of layers and why they're really useful in digital drawing apps. Most digital drawing apps have a layering option. Um, ours today in Autodesk Sketchbook is located right here on the right hand side. And this is our preliminary layer that they have uh, offered to or given us. If you want to add layers, you can hit the plus button. And if you want to delete layers, all you have to do is tap on this and you see a menu of options pop up and I will delete right over here. Let's look at some of the other uh, tools that are offered here. We have a copy button. Well, in order to copy, we got to draw something. So let's say, for example, I want to draw a heart and I'm happy with that heart. All you have to do is hit copy and then with the paste button, and we've got this heart and we could paste it wherever we want. You can increase it. It's a good option if you've drawn something and you want to do repetition of that. And that's how we have what the copy paste button does. The other option is cut. So let's say for example, I just wanted to cut those two things. I could undo that. If um, I want to clear my options, all you have to do is, let's say for example, I did uh, a little scribble here and a little scribble there. If I want to clear everything out, you just could hit the clear and it wipes everything out from that particular layer. If you just do some various different things and I just want to get rid of the last thing I did, up at the top, the arrow right here, that's my undo button. That just gets rid of the last thing. If I want to reset it, I could redo it right there. Or I want to undo the last few steps, I could go there. But if you just don't like everything, you just hit clear layer. It's about working digitally and in digital drawing apps is the ability to import pictures and use those as references or to trace on top of. To import a picture, we are going to go to the top menu option where you see a picture of the triangles. It's going to open up to my photos. I'm going to pick a picture of my puppy dog. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger to the size that I care for. Hit done. And now you see I have a picture of my dog. Now if I want to draw on top of him, I could, if I want to, I could just draw directly onto my photo. But if I want it to be a little bit more mine or uh, work more from scratch, let me hit undo. This is where the layers come in real handy. I'm going to hit the plus sign and that's going to create another layer. I need to make sure I'm working in the new layer that I just created and I'm going to draw right here on top where my dog is. Now if you're having issues seeing your picture, you could go to the layer where you had the um, picture of the dog and click on your menus and you could change the opacity of the image. So if you want it to be a little bit lighter so you could see a little bit more of what you're doing, you could go right there and then click out of it and I'll go back to this one. And now it's a little bit easier to see my subject. And this is completely optional. So let's say I start tracing an image of my dog to just get the, the basics out. Isn't he a cute pup? His name is Lenny Kravitz. He's one of my rescues that I got uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. And he's my absolute sweetheart. Okay, so I'll get enough drawn so you guys can kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. Now I'll zoom out. Let's say, for example, you want to see what your progress looks like without the photo underneath it. All you have to do is go to the layer that you have of the dog and hit the, the eyeball and that's going to make the photo itself disappear so you can see your current progress. Hit the eyeball back again on this layer and you can continue drawing. And if uh, you want to go back to the image of the photo and you want to see it without the drawing, you could hit the um, invisible button right there. It's important when you're dealing with your layers that you have them organized. If you noticed, I messed up earlier and uh, instead of drawing on this layer, I went and drew on my dog layer. If it really bothers you, you could get the eraser, but the eraser is going to erase everything you have here. So I have my cashmere eraser, I'll decrease it, 
And if that line right there that I drew on my dog's right ear is annoying to you, you could go and erase it, but keep in mind, that's gonna erase all of this. It's too late for me to hit the undo button here because I already went and did work on another section. So it's basically gonna be stuck there. If it super bothered me, you could do things like you could try to blend it in. Um, I could pick up the color and blend it. But it's pretty much there and stuck. And this is why it's important to know what layer you're working in. Uh, to help you organize your layers, let's say, for example, there's a layer I'm working just on my dog's head. I'm doing all the details. I could label right here them by color. And maybe everything I do with drawing with my dog's head, I do with red. And let's pretend like my, set, my other layer, uh, set of layers, I just do the fur and coloring the fur. Then I could um, go here and I could pick a color that all the blues represent the work I've done with the fur. Unfortunately, we can't name the layers. Some drawing apps allow you to name the layers and you can see it's photo, underlying drawing, color. But this one, you'll just have to figure out how to organize. In this last part of the lesson, I'm going to teach you guys how to duplicate your slot layers, locking layers, adding colors, and the importance of the order of your layers. I'm going to start off by doing a sphere, and I will be able to get that by going to the shapes, and I'm going to pick the sphere right here in the middle. I got a good color for that, and I'll draw it right there. Ta-da! There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. So you just go to the menu option right here and you hit duplicate. And now it's created a second layer. I like to create multiple layers. So if I need to go back and do something different for the first one, I could go back there. So in this particular layer, always make sure you're in the correct one. I'm going to get click off of my shapes and I'm going to go to my bucket. And I'm going to pick a nice light blue color to go with. There we go. And I'm going to fill that particular one in. I want to now go and add gradations and shading to this. So I'm going to duplicate this layer again. And I'm going to pick the airbrush tool. Airbrush is my favorite tool to blend and gradate with. And I'm going to go nice and light right here. And let's see if I get this right. If I lock this layer, I could sit there, there we go. I could lock this layer and you guys could see I'm drawing on the outside as well. And the only thing that's being affected is the last thing I drew. And this comes in super handy when you want to work a uh, shade and you don't want to have to be really careful. Like my uh, finger, so I'm drawing with my finger is going outside of the sphere. If I were, didn't lock this layer, it would uh, be a big old mess all on the outside. But when I do lock this layer, it keeps everything nice, neat, and orderly right there. I'm gonna continue to go down in my gradations. And right now it's gonna look a little stripey, but I'll show you how to blend that all together here in a sec. All right, go a little bit darker. And then we'll get a nice dark, dark, dark color. There we go. And ta-da. I have now done this with the layers locked. Now I could unlock the layer and now I could affect the outside. And if I did it right here, it would affect there as well. Let me undo that because that's not actually what I wanted to do. I'm going to copy this layer again. Don't worry, when you get too many, I'll show you also how you can merge them. And in this one, I'm going to do my blending. My favorite tool to blend with are the colorless blenders. And I'll do a medium one right here. And I'll just swipe it across. Ooh, helps if I lock it. And there you go. And this kind of gets rid of that stripey effect and blends things together a little bit better. Oops, let me go lighter. And again, my finger, I am just going back and forth the entire, um, the entire screen. And because I locked it, it's not affecting this. There you go. I'm just being as sloppy as possible. Now, if I didn't have this locked, like I said, it would go all over the place. And then you would have to zoom back in and you would have to uh, erase a bunch of things. And it just wouldn't be much fun. 
Um, I learned this the hard way. And whenever I made a mistake, I would have to go do a lot of cleanup and that took many, many hours. This hopefully will help save you a bunch of time. Okay, now let's play with the order of layers. If I want to fill the background, here's a couple things we could play with. This is, um, I could go to the background and let's say I wanna do like a galaxy. So I'll go really dark. If I go ahead and fill in right here, with the bucket, it would cover everything up. So I don't want that to happen. I could, let's see if I lock it, fills everything up again. So if I reorder it though, and I hold it down, holding it down, boop, and move it over here. And now if I hit the paint bucket layer, it only does the stuff in the background. And this is the, the cool part. Um, so nothing was affected. And that's where the order of your layers can be really important. And some other fun things I could do is I, I could add uh, like a star. Let me see if I wanna do like a shooting star, for example. So let me get some white right here. And, and do you see how it only went on the background. So my finger went right across the steer, but it only affected the background. If I had this in a reverse order, it would have scribbled right all over it. I could do another one right here and I'm gonna intentionally go through the, uh, my sphere. And you guys see it only went there. And then just for funsies, let's see if I can add some stars. Oops, did it not add? big liner it's not adding here well let's add the actual stars there's a star pattern here and you guys can see oops let's make it a little smaller and the rest is pretty easy so you guys we talked about the order layers we talked about adding color here let me show you when I swipe it across again it only affects the stuff in the background um, and we talked about duplicating layers when you think you have everything done and you're happy with what you got. The last thing you guys could do is you can merge your layers. And that just means it pushes everything together. But that's only when you think you want to be completely done. I could do it individually, so I can merge this one with the last one, and now they go together. Or if you think you're absolutely done, or you just have too many layers going on, you have to 15, 20, then you can hit merge all, and it just starts from square one, 